everybody welcome to my channel my name is Teresa and today I have a special guest hello my friend Katie um, she's actually my friend Sarah's sister and Sarah has been on my channel a couple times so I made her do a video with me um so I have a series makeup and this and what I do is I put on my makeup and I talk about local urban legends to myself and I do my makeup. Well, in today's video, we are going to talk about something that actually is not a myth and nothing, nobody has credited anything that happened there. Like there's no explanation other than it's haunted. Um, and Katie has actually been there. Multiple the times. <laughs> You you did tours like you paid. Did you do the overnight one? Yeah, yeah. I only did the tour one time. Um, that's during the day, the ghost tour. But then we did the overnight ghost hunt. Um, God, it had to have been at least five times. Oh really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. I really want to check that place out because I when I looked online, it w it wasn't actually that expensive. Like, no, I think I I want to say the overnight. Um, it's been a couple years now, but it was like 30 or $35 That's per That's not person. bad, no. actually. No, it really isn't. Because I've seen if you do like a guided tour or something, it was like $5 a person, which is nothing. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. So that's, that's awesome. So what we're actually talking about today is the Iron Island Museum. It's in Lovejoy, New York. In the city of Buffalo, there's different areas. Like there's Lovejoy, um... Oh. There's like the ward, the little Hollywood. There's like little, like subdivisions. Yeah, the subdivisions in the city of Buffalo. And Lovejoy is in the east side of Buffalo, but it's called Lovejoy. And they call the museum Iron Island because, well, Lovejoy is called Iron Island. It's not actually an island, but it is surrounded by railroad tracks so that's why they call it iron island and lovejoy actually got its name from sarah lovejoy um back in the 1812 the war of 1812 um the area was taken over and her house was ransacked and she didn't leave her house and I guess she had her son like run into the woods and hide, but she wanted to just protect her property and she ended up getting stabbed and her body was dragged out into the yard and the neighbors pulled her body back in the yard, but I guess a fire broke loose and her remains ended up burning up in the house. But there is a memorial for her in Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo, New York. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Like I never knew that, that yeah, Lovejoy. I think it's a cute name though, Lovejoy. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we'll get into the museum. Um, the museum used to be a church back in the 1800s. And then the parish kind of just um, whittled down and they ended up moving to a different church. And so the, the building stayed vacant for a few years and then bought the, the building for a funeral home and that's probably where a lot of the spirit activity came from is the funeral home i agree and in the year 2000 the funeral home ended up donating it to the lovejoy society and they ended up taking over and turning it into a museum so that's a little backstory of the museum so I guess they didn't realize it was haunted right away. Linda is like the owner of the, the museum and I guess she was preparing for a Christmas party and she was in the building alone in the kitchen and she heard in the front room chairs and tables being moved around and it freaked her out. She ran out of the building. She called one of the volunteers to have, you know, somebody's in the building. And they came and they went into the building, searched everything. No one was in there. And the tables and chairs were exactly where they were when they left them. So it, it sounded like they were being moved around, but nothing actually was moved. 
so that's when they started noticing activity. Well, I guess they went into the basement to do some exploring, whatever, cleaning it out, and they found seven paint can canisters of remains, cremation remains of unclaimed people when they came for, you know, no one claimed the remains, so they just shoved them in the basement. And Edgar, he is one of the residents' ghosts. I guess back in 2008, Ghost Hunters, Taps, I don't know if any of you guys actually remember that show, they actually came there and they brought a psychic along and they climbed, there's a ladder you could climb up and he stuck his head in the attic and he asked like, what is your name? And what does your name start with? And he said the letter E. So I guess the owners of the museum went and like researched whose remains were left into the basement. And one of the remains was Edgar. So, yeah, so I've had just a couple experiences with Edgar. Um, so first of all, in, in, in the museum itself, there's um, a couple different rooms. Um, and off of like the chapel room, there's like this little like hallway if you will um it doesn't go anywhere and that's where like the ladder is to go up into the attic so um that little room in the attic they say is edgar's um edgar's room um that's where he usually likes to hang out um with him we've only really heard like banging and stuff coming either from the attic when we were in the chapel room or um like in that little room itself um people have said that like being in that little room, they feel a lot of like anger and like anger, I guess. Like um, anxiety and like, stuff. Yeah. Anger, anxiety when they're when they're in that room. Um, so they usually don't let people go up into the attic. Um, but they did let us allow us to go up into the attic, and I That's remember. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It, it was cool, um, and. So we were like up there snapping pictures and stuff um, and up in the attic there is a um, like a stained glass window um, and um, a picture that I captured and of course I can't find it now um, to show you guys. Um, we, we did capture like it was like a, a ghost um, like you could see like like it's eyes and like it almost looked like they were wearing like suspenders we want to say it was Edgar that we caught but we, I'm can't really be sure and you know it's funny that you said he was angry I guess his remains weren't picked up because the family didn't really like him that much I guess he was a deadbeat <clears throat> dad and I when they found family members they said he, all I really remember of him is him being angry like he was just a miserable old man so that kind of is interesting that you they feel anger when they go like when they're in the presence of Edgar. Yeah, they always say that, you know, he's the angry, angry old man that haunts the place. Um, so that, that was kind of cool. Um, that is. That, that little room always scared me to go in there, like, by myself, um, because of all, like, the stories and stuff I heard. Um, but one thing, when we were in the, um, the chapel room, we were doing the thing with the, the, um, the flashlights. Oh, okay. um, so I, I know this is a bet on like um, like ghost hunters and stuff. Um, if any of you are paranormal, like follow the paranormal or ghost hunt yourself, um, I'm sure you know the trick. I've used it where like you take a flashlight where you twist it on and you twist it on just enough to where it's off and then like just the slightest like tap or touch can like turn it on. And we were sitting in the chapel room and we were asking questions like, is anybody here with us? Whatever we were asking. And I just remember the first time that that, so we were, it was dark, like pitch black in there. And we were all just sitting on the one couch that was in there. And the very first time that that light turned on when we asked it a question, it just scared me so much. Like I was frozen in fear because like we didn't turn it on and like something else and I feel like that was like the first time we went there that was like my very first experience with like with the paranormal itself oh, really? yeah and it like it just it freaked me out um and it like you know turned off a couple times and back on um as we were like asking it questions um 
again, I hadn't been there. I haven't been there in like probably five years. So my memory might be a little foggy of like the questions we were asking and stuff, but but yeah, that's that's one experience I had in you know in the chapel room. Anyway, that's crazy with Edgar. And so. I guess the chapel room is actually from a church in Buffalo from the 18, 1896. Like they brought over the altar and stuff and placed it in the room. I did my internet research. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also say the museum is haunted by two six-year-old boys. And I found the name of one of them. His name is Tommy. And actually, he is the son of Linda. I, I just found, Katie just told me about this today. Um, Linda is the <clears throat> owner of the museum, I guess, in the 1960s or 70s. I want to say 70s. 70s. They, when it was a funeral home, he had his wake there. And... People have experienced all sorts of things. I guess they have a room that's called Tommy's room, or they call it the children's room, and they'll leave out toys for him to play with. And when I was doing my research, they had a, um, I guess they had like a tape recorder, and they were asking, what's your favorite toy, Tommy? And he, they caught him saying boat. And when they asked the family, they said that was his favorite toy. So I think that's kind of cool. Didn't you have experiences with that too? Yeah, we did. So um, a couple things. So the 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 children's room that they call it. Um, there is like a, a so in in the children's room there is a model of a boat, um, which is cool. And there's like a, a a bunch of different like things about boats in there, and like they've got toys and and stuff all in there. Um, so we were in there the one time, um, sitting around the little table, um, asking our questions, whatever. Um, and we asked if like Tommy was there or something like that. And like, we actually saw like a ball, like roll just a little bit all by itself. And again, nobody was around it. We were, everybody in our party was sitting in, you know, the chairs in the middle of the room. Um, so even like stepping or like walking around, like we weren't even doing that. So like, even like the vibrations, like wouldn't have made it moved. So that was kind of cool. Um, and then we also had another, I had another experience that, I guess really wasn't with Tommy, but like I thought we were talking to Tommy. So they have dividing uh, rods. Um, and I don't know if you guys know what they are, but they're like little rods that are like in L shapes. Um, I'll and, insert a picture. Um, and so you hang on to them. You've got to ground them first. You, um, you hang on to them and like you can ask questions um, and they will move by themselves. Like, you know, and they, they move freely. Um, they did used to use those um, back in the day to like find like water and stuff. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, I, you know, now that you mention it, I think I remember hearing yeah. something about and it. They, That's kind of cool. They also, because I have a pair myself, and they also help you find things. Um, just a, a little side note here. Um, I lost a pair of earrings that I was I couldn't find anywhere. And I, I picked them up at home because I just was at my wit's end. I couldn't find them anywhere. And I picked them up and like, I like, I'm like, where are my earrings or whatever I said. And it like literally pointed me to them and I found them. So little where sidebar. Where do you buy those? Where do they um, sell them? Online? Yeah. I okay. Them online. Um, I think they're made out of like copper or something. Oh, okay. Um, but so anyway, um, we were, um, I was using the dividing rods and like they say, like, you know, if you're holding them and like you ask Tommy to give you a hug, like they'll swing around to like where they like, you know, touch your, the outside of your shoulders or whatever. And like, that's them giving you a hug. Um, and I, I asked, it happened and I was like, oh, Tommy, is that you giving me a hug? And, and our EVPs, um, when we went back later and we were reviewing it um I we got a voice that said um Tommy's not here and like it was like a deep like man's voice and it like I don't know at the time I thought it was Tommy you know talking with me and stuff and it was actually a, somebody so what else chills like it did. It, my hair would stand up yes it really did when I when we went back and were you with you know, um your boyfriend when that happened yeah yeah oh, okay. so he was he's been there with me every time we went um but we didn't it was actually when we got home and i actually started reviewing like the evps and stuff is when um Ooh. yeah it was yeah, that's creepy it did i was like i was shocked to hear it and i'm like oh geez i'm so glad i'm honestly glad i didn't hear it at the place because i probably would have yeah i ran out or something so 
that that's cool. Um, those are my couple experiences from Tommy, I guess. Oh, well, I guess his spirit is still there and he's still playing. And yeah, they actually they've got like a whole display of like um, like a little case um, like de devoted to Tommy um, because it was the the owner's son. Um, and I know the um, owner's uh, daughter is also like has a big part in it maybe like co-owner or something in the museum and oh, okay um they they're thrilled in a way that you know he is still hanging around um but they've got like a whole like case that has like his clothes and like his favorite dolls and stuff like that kind of memorializes him oh, okay nice. so well the museum also has like a lot of military memorabilia it has uh, a model of the central terminal the new york central terminal is it like a train that they have, they have or just like a model um i think it's just a model oh okay from what i remember and they yeah i guess they have a lot of like military outfits and um i guess there's a, a lot of things to be seen there and I'll link it down below if you're ever in the Buffalo area or if you live around here, definitely check it out. You know, and when I went on the website, they have like a bunch of EVPs you could listen to. It's it's really neat thing to see, you know. I'm really glad that Lovejoy has a museum like that. I don't know. I think it's really awesome. Yes, it is. So in the military room, um, I... Other than like, you know, noises and stuff I heard, um, I, I it didn't, so this didn't happen to us um, particularly. So the caretaker of the uh, museum itself, like he's the one who um, comes and lets you in when you're doing the overnights um, and he'll like lock up when you leave, that kind of thing. Um, so he actually stayed the one time and actually, um, uh, you know, went on our ghost hunt with us. Um, and we were in the military room and we were sitting around and we weren't really getting um, much activity at the moment, but he was telling us about when, um, prior when he was um, there with another group, they were sitting around, um, sitting around the, the table again. Uh, and um, they heard a, just a loud noise, a loud bang, like something fell off. So when they went up, um something fell down and when they got up to investigate it was they had this like giant like picture that um fell off of the wall so um and he was telling us he's like it's the strangest thing because like in order to get that off of the wall you literally have to lift it up and out in order for it to come down and like the like the screws that it was on nothing like was broken like something literally lifted it up and made it fall down they so wanted was, to be known. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was freaky when he told us, you know, sitting in complete black, you know, complete darkness and. Oh, so they do the tours it, when they do the tours, it, they keep all the lights off and everything, the ghost tours. No, no, no. Uh, during the, the tours itself, um, it's literally like a, a, just a tour. It's during the day. Um, it's the ghost hunt, um, at night when, like the overnights, when they turn off all the lights and, you know, you're. Do it. They even have like equipment too that you can use. They have like um, an EMF detector. They've got the dowsing rods. Oh, so they um, let you use got, all that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Um, the only thing they didn't have is like um, like a voice recorder. You kind of have to bring your own for that. Okay. Um, and I did have all of you know our EVPs on a voice recorder, but when I found it, uh, my boyfriend actually <laughs> <laughs> um, recorded over it um, with some music that he was playing so well that's okay Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but i will link the website below so if you want to hear any recordings you'll you could check that out but one more okay. experience um, okay so this one was just absolutely crazy um so in the basement we like i said we had been there a couple times um and I was always terrified. I'm always terrified of basements. They always freak me out. Like I never wanted to go in the basement. So it was actually the last time we went, um, we finally did go into the basement and um, it was it was creepy down there like and whatever. So then there is a part in the basement where the wall is like knocked down and you can actually, there's like 
earth. Um, dirt I've seen and stuff. a picture of that. Yeah. Um, so um, we were sitting again around like a little, you know, table or whatever, and um, we were asking questions and whatever. And Alex and our friend Craig um, were like standing up and they were we weren't really getting much action at the time um so and they were messing around with you know walking around and whatever going like by the earth and whatnot so um so then things started to pick up and we started getting hits on like the at the um, emf reader and then um alex just started like freaking out um he's like oh my god something touched me and like um, he was like real freaked out about that. And I remember we got an EVP too. He, cause he had asked like, did you touch me? And, um, the EVP said something like, um, you know, I didn't mean to, or I'm sorry oh, or really? something like that. Yeah. It was really cool. Is a EVP just a recording? Is that all it is? Or is it a special recorder? No, it's just a, just a regular, it's just a like, term a for it. Recorder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, fast forward, you know, we went back upstairs, um, we were in like the kitchen area where like the light was actually on and we were, you know, regrouping, figuring out what we were going to do next. And he looked down and he had a handprint of dirt on his pants. Now he's very particular about his jeans. Like he doesn't like to get them dirty unless, um, unless he's going somewhere to get dirty. Like, <laughs> um, you know, he's got his good pants and his, you know, dirty pants. Um, and he literally had a handprint on his thigh, but instead of like, so it was like facing up, um, as opposed to like, if you were to touch yourself, it would be facing down. The handprint was facing up. And in order to do that, like you have to like turn your arm like that and actually, and he didn't do that. So that was just, that was another one that was just really, really creepy, blew me away. That's insane. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> and thank you all so much for watching. I would love if you like and subscribe. After this month, I'm going to be doing makeup and myths once a month throughout the year. So I would love if you'd stay and check them out. I also have four other videos that I did about Pigman Road, Summit House, Grand Island Hotel, or Holiday Inn, and what Gutelberg Cemetery. So I, I hope you guys enjoy your Halloween and I will see you soon. And maybe you'll see Katie soon too. Maybe me, you, and Sarah could do something fun together. I don't know, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right guys, bye. Bye.